and welcome back to our Project Hybrid Bike Build. We've had a couple of weeks off because I've been on holiday, but I'm back now and we are back on the bike, keen to get it going. So, speaking of getting it going, we're hoping to get it running today and we're going to have a video of the carb rebuild or carbs rebuild and we're going to slim that in in a little while. Malcolm's been doing that whilst I was away and mostly we're going to be doing wiring, making sense of that mess. Well, he is anyway. Isn't that right? Uh, yeah, probably. Have a look. So we've put the coil packs and the resistors on already and they fit nicely under the tank, which obviously we checked before we put the tank on the first time. <coughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> The last thing you want to do is uh, fit the tank and then realise you might have to move coil packs and stuff. But they fit perfectly. Yeah. As planned. Uh, indeed. Anyway, wherever you're doing anything on the bike, as long as the bike is original and all the wiring is original and all the wiring colours are original, I always recommend getting a book. Now, you don't have to get a brand new one and you probably can't find a brand new one. So I got this on eBay for a Brilliant price of six quid, I think. Bargain. I might have paid more, I don't know, but you're not going to pay more than a tenner, to be fair. So, yes, there we go. We do have a small variation that we've got electronic ignition fitted, so we have to figure yes, that out. We do. Yes, good point. But, now, what we were going to do originally was rewire the entire bike. It's not that expensive, it's probably going to be about £250 once you've bought all the connectors and all the resistors and all the 16 different colours of wire. But, unravelling some of this, the wire is still very flexible and not brittle, not broken, nothing. So, what we're going to do is leave the wire as it is and just repair in certain parts where wire has frayed or broken and maybe replace just one or two wires. But it's not necessary to do the entire lot. It's extremely time consuming for Malcolm because he's the wiring expert. Would you class yourself as a wiring expert? No. But I've you, done wiring. You've done a lot of wiring. I've done a bit of wiring, yeah. A hell of a lot of wiring. You rewired a car? Two. Two cars. Well, there you go then. He's an expert. So, yes, that's where we are. Let's crack on. Be shoving stuff in holes. It's done, that's it. I'm going out. Alright, start out. Doesn't work. You're not trying hard enough. What's kickstand? Where's, where's your positive attitude? It's no kickstand. Kickstart. And there's no button. Oh. Right, okay, so the plan is anyway to no battery lay the wires out in some kind of position that they're likely to be in. Now, a couple of things are moving, like the ignition is not going to be up here, it's going to be under here. That doesn't the, make a great deal of difference. It does make a great deal of difference, but <laughs> I realised that once. It? <laughs> it's about four millimetres away from where it was. <laughs> However, a lot of the wiring is going to go under the tank and be hidden nicely under the tank, so we don't have all this mess that was originally down here. Well, a lot of this will stay put. The main part is the... It's going to contradict everything I say. Pretty much. The stuff that was... That's tucked. what you said, though, originally. Put the wiring under there so it doesn't go in yeah, there. Yeah, no, not, not this stuff. All these components. So I was right. Any wiring that was... What you're actually saying is I was right. No. Anything but that was... But in a roundabout way, what you're saying is I'm right. No. The stuff that was in the headlight, we're going to try and bring that out of the headlight and tuck it under the tank. So you haven't got a massive bunch of wires going through to the headlight. Okay. And then off to the switches and everywhere else. We just run what's necessary, which is what I've done with mine. And it just looks a lot tidier. Nice. Um, are these coil wires supposed to be on top of the engine? Well, I don't remember them being there. I don't remember them being there either. But Surely that gets hot and melts. No, I shouldn't do. It's not upside down, is it? I don't think so. I remember seeing three O's written on top of them. That can't be right. And the writing on the side is the right way up, and the screws are the right way up. So why aren't they melted? Because it doesn't get that hot. That's probably what these boots Mind are. Mind you, actually, looking at it, look. 
you pull that aside, pull that aside, you can see it rubbing away on the top of the block there. Yeah, where so it has been in contact. It has been there before. It looks like that's where it was. That's I, strange. I remember it crossing over the back like that. But we can go back on photos and check. That's why we took photos yeah. originally, so we know where the wires and everything are supposed to be. Yeah, at the moment it doesn't matter. Um, no. Later on we'll check that. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment I just want to get all this stuff roughly where it's going to be, which is sort of under the seat and behind the battery, or in front of the battery if you like but not too far forward that it's going to interfere with the carbs. The regulator thing and the that's in here, an aluminium block thing with fins on, oh, is yeah. air cooled, so right. quite nice to put that maybe on the back of the battery box to get maximum air. Now with things like this, I'm probably going to look and buy another one of these. Yeah, I mean we could clean that up with a toothbrush and a bit of... Yeah, but out. when it comes to the, like, the important stuff, I'd rather get new, because at the end of the day, this is a 1978 bike, and chances are that's been on there since 1978. Possibly, yeah. So things like that, I'd like to get new. So, yeah, I mean that's that's your regulator. Yes. No big deal. I don't know what this thing is. I can't. <laughs> I can't figure it out. No idea. That's where the book comes in handy. Yeah. Okay. Now we've had a bit of a debate because I am quite keen on starting afresh with the wiring. I mean the money side of it, 250 quid is fine. That doesn't bother me. Um, my concern is riding down the road with old wiring on a newly built bike and it going wrong. Malcolm feels it doesn't need to be rewired because it's not actually that bad. No, I think it's okay. It's just a good day. What do you think? What would you do in, a, in the real world, not ideally? I mean, obviously, ideally, yeah, rewire the whole bike, no problem. Well, ideally, you should buy a replacement loom, right? Yes. Exactly the same. But... In the real world, if it was your bike, what would you do? Please comment below and let us know. It wouldn't be a bad idea to look to see how much a new loom is. It might be quite cheap. What, for this? Yeah. Entire loom? Hmm. Hold that thought. Okay, I'm back. Now, I've been on eBay. And for £192 and £20 postage from Germany, I can get a brand new wiring loom for the Honda CB404 F2, which is what this is, 1974 to 1978. So, that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna buy one. I'm not gonna nip upstairs now on my computer and buy it instantly. And uh, we're still gonna crack ahead with this, just to see if we can get it laid out so we know where it's going and see if we can get the bike fired up. But in the meantime, I'm buying that. Result, so much easier. Why did we think of that in the first place? Uh, no, let me phrase that. Why didn't you think of that in the first place? I did think of it just then. Was that the first place? It was this place. Oh, okay. It was that your place? It's done. Woo! -hoo! Yeah. So we've got our headlight wiring and stuff that we don't need to connect up. It doesn't matter at the moment. That's our ignition switch. We're going to need that. These are... What is this? Oh, that's the handlebar wiring for all the switches and whatnot. That is the wiring for coils and the electronic ignition things. I'm guessing that's supposed to go to the stator. So that's those wires. And then we've got the engine harness here, which I can plug in. So that's getting our power from the stator. And no doubt the thingy for the trigger for the coils. We've got our indicator hoogee. That's our start solenoid, a diode for making electric only go one way. That's our rear lights, again we don't need those. That's our fuses. That's our regulator for the charge system. I think it's all pretty straightforward really, it's not that bad. So bearing in mind I've now bought a new wiring room and it's on its way. Yeah. What are we going to need today? Um, I will need to, if we're going to try and start it, which I'd like to do, um, I want to know what this is. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to look in the book in a minute just to, so I know in my head what that is. I'll probably look, look in the book and then go, oh, that's what it is. So uh, of course it is. Um, yeah, so I just need to connect up the coils, connect up the engine, which I've done, connect up this. Um, this 
can just lay there, that can lay there, that doesn't need connecting. So we just need to connect the battery up to the battery lead. And there's a negative lead down here on the engine block. There's a ground for the wiring somewhere around here there. That needs to be grounded to the battery also. At that point we should have, and obviously connect the coils and whatnot up to where they're supposed to be, but we should have some sort of life. If we pop the carbs on, find a way of intravenous feeding the, the fuel into the carbs. Yeah. Um, obviously we're going to have to manually do the ignition. Okay, so if we use the battery booster, we're not going to need obviously the kickstart because we'll have enough power constantly in the battery. Yeah, exactly. We won't overdo it because we don't want to overheat the starter motor and we don't want to burn the battery out. So we'll just put it on low and we'll try it every now and again until it goes. Okay. And not cook everything. Awesome. Yeah, fingers crossed, eh? Woohoo! So it's not necessarily important, but I like to know what everything does so that when I'm faffing about, I've sort of got an idea of what's going on. So that is our rectifier. So that's rectifying our AC signal from the stators to a DC for the battery charging. This thing, which I wasn't sure of, that's our uh, regulator, which regulates the charge uh, current and I guess voltage as well to the uh, battery whilst it's running. The little square thing, which I said was a diode to stop electric going one way, it is just that, but it's a diode uh, for the clutch cutout. So I presume you have to pull the clutch in order to start the bike. So this is the page in the book that we are interested in and this tells you what all the wires do and where they go. It's monstrous and it's, this is what confuses me. Well that's why we've just identified what all the parts are so we can say for our regulator for example we can see that's our regulator we now know what colour the wires are and then where they go to so we can check at the other end that we've plugged it into the correct place hmm. I can, by tracing the wires. I can see it's logic. Hmm. It's just when I initially look at things like this, I think, oh, scary. But it, when you follow the lines, it is quite straightforward. Yeah, it's just like one of them games as a kid where you trace the lines and get where you want to go. Etch a sketch. No, no, no. Like <laughs> in the back of um, comics and stuff where you just draw a line and go from start to end. Find the correct line to the finish zone, find the treasure. Oh, shut up. All right, so. A little bit of a progress update, we're not recording everything because otherwise it's just going to be long winded and boring. Um, I've plugged in some of the coily bits because I'm still trying to figure out what the deal is with that so I need to just get the multimeter in a minute and just check the voltage there. Um, I've got the battery wires where they need to be, I've yet to figure out what this wire is for. <laughs> I'll do that in a minute. Uh, I'm now going to pop the battery in place uh, and see, I should have 12 volts here. If I have then what with the ignition on. And that's our coil supply. Um, and then I believe that connects to this and we're pretty much good to crank it over. We just need the carbs and some fuel and uh, with any luck, touch some wood and fingers crossed it'll go. Okay so there is some electric in the battery. How much is some? 11.1 uh, it's a bit low. Mm. I mean, it's a new battery, but I've only charged it once in the last, what, eight Yeah, weeks? I mean, let's press face it, we, we killed it when we first got it. Mm. And, uh, and then it's been on trickle charge a couple of times. Do you think we need a new battery? I don't think so. If we put some power in and then keep it topped up with your trickly thing. Yes. Keep it connected the whole time. That'd be fine. Really? Yeah. I always feel a bit weird about doing that. It's a conditioner, it's meant to be connected the whole time. That's okay. what it's for. Okay. Um, yeah, so, I mean, if I touch that on there, Nothing sparks. No sparks, so nothing's shorting out and blowing up, so that's good. Uh, so I'm going to fix that on. So we've had to do a bit of problem solving here. Um, and it's a good job that we've in fact ordered a new wiring loom because we have no power at the ignition switch. So we've traced it back where we started on the battery, traced through to find out where the power should go. We've got a main fuse here, this connector leading to the fuse box. Summertime along the line, look. Someone has replaced that spade connector. This should be about that long to reach into the other connector. That's not happening, so we're not getting full power up there all the time. So that was just held in there with, uh, what is it, luck and a prayer or song and a prayer or something? Wing and a prayer. Who? Wing and a prayer. Yeah, that. And uh, you've got to make sure it's poking good and proper and then don't jostle it. And then we get power at the switch, which is brilliant. So we can now see if we can rig that and then get power to our coils. We've connected up the run switch and the electric start switch. 
and I've jerry-rigged a wire, hot wiring, <laughs> like in the films. So that gives us our ignition, you can set it to run, I get power at the coils, that's good, and it cranks. So, get the carbs on, chuck some oil in it and an oil filter, we should be able to give it a go. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. So the new oil filter has just gone in and screwed on and the petrol tank, the old petrol tank still has some petrol in. We've just made sure that's clean and clear and there's no little bits in it. That's now sitting in situ waiting to feed the carburetors which are also now on with the new rebuild kit. Now before we start it we're just going to run that video so you can see how these were rebuilt. Do bear in mind that the camera is ghastly. So the quality isn't brilliant, but uh, just bear with it. Yeah, we'll run it anyway. And cue. Okay, so today I have been tasked with sorting these carbs out by way of stripping them down, giving them a quick clean, and replacing these parts. So there's some jets in there and a spring and some seals and stuff. I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail, so I'm gonna start by just taking these float bowls off and uh, give everything a good clean up. So I'm just going to grab some tools. Fairly clean and it smells fresh. Again though, that looks pretty clean. Really not that bad. Flip this over then and have a look at the other side. So these top pits have got some sort of mechanism with a slider uh, to open the throttle. So in here, look, we've got uh, the throttle pulls on the uh, thingy there and lifts up these levers, and that pulls a slider up and down inside there, which obviously opens up your airway, but also the jet for the fuel. Interesting, them tabs have already been bent down. I mean, somebody's been in here before. The other ones, however, are not. So I've just bent the little metal tabs over there because they're there to provide a lock to stop the screw from undoing there. I'm going to take this return spring off, give myself a fighting chance of actually keeping this thing open. That makes it a lot easier. Let's uh, undo these little doodies. Arm on there, we don't need to take that out. 
I am, however, going to knock out. There's a tube at the bottom there. It comes through here. So I'm going to get a thin punch. I'm just going to knock it out from the inside. I didn't have a punch, but I found this kind of bridle thing. It's quite smooth, so it won't damage the, uh, the bit down there. Also, I've taken everything off the table because if I hammer on this now, it's going to fly all over the place. So I've moved it. gummed up and disgusting. Look at that. Nice. There it goes. So there's our tube. Ooh, yucky. Got a smut on that. Nice. That's got holes in, so I'm guessing that needs to be clean. Okay, cool. It's all good. Now, See right through everything, apart from obviously when the chokes are shut. I'm going to get a bit of a spray with some carb cleaner. Get the compressor out, blow some air through it. Try and clean it up as best I can. This is just some uh, injector and carb cleaner. From... This came from the bike shop as it happens, but uh, you can get it in a, any old car auto place. Right, so I've got the compressor out. I haven't bothered to record that because, let's face it, they're noisy and horrible. Give it a good old blast of air through all these ports. And... Okay, so I'm going to pop this back together. Chances are I'll probably just speed this up. Then I'm going to go through all the other three. Um, I'm probably speed that up as well. So let's crack on. wondering what I'm doing here, I'm just popping a little tiny bit of grease around it so the air ring goes in without getting torn. It's as simple as that really. Just enough to uh, give it some lubrication. So I don't damage anything. There you have it, that's number one done. I'm now going to crack on with the other three. And then the final piece to the puzzle. Drain O-ring thing. A little bit hard and Rubbish, because that one wasn't too bad, the others were terrible. Good grease to stop from gripping and tearing. 
Good. And welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope it wasn't too um, tedious. Let me say, monotone for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uncharismatic. <laughs> okay, so we're ready just about to stick the battery on and give this a go. Now, you were debating whether we should be putting ear defenders on at this stage. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking that exhaust is going to be pretty loud in this enclosed space. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to risk it. I want to hear that the initial start to be that raw. I think we'll get some pop-in to start with. So oh, I'm sure you'll know. You'll know whether it's too loud or not. Yeah. Anyway, I'm getting cramped leaning down like that. Oh. Okay. The old man, stand up. Yeah. <laughs> not looking at me either. Not a groan not inside. A groan. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. You, oh, you held it in. I held it in. <laughs> oh, just to mention, uh, we've put the old handlebars on just for the use of the. Uh, run switch and the push button start thing. Yes. Otherwise, it's uh, not connected at all. Well, we're just going to stick some oil in before, obviously, we do anything else. And um, discovered that this um, silkaline is. Uh, it is. It doesn't matter. How many times you smell it? Chocolate milkshake. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's like chocolate milkshake. Like chocolate milkshake. Weird. Right. Well, apparently, we have to put three and a half liters in. So that's almost all that oil. So, so three and a half liters. Of Off you go. Wastage. So whilst Malcolm's wrestling with the oil, the oil filter that's gone in is this one. So you can see the part number on there. If you have a Honda 404, that's what you need to get as a replacement oil filter. So the oil is in, the battery is charged, uh, yes? It's got charge in it. What's it got? 13 volts. 13 volts. Okay, we're going to stick the battery on and then you're going to be witnessing the first proper start. I'm being positive here. Yeah. Since 1997, I believe. Yeah, because you can't count what we did before as a start. Can no, you? that wasn't it. <laughs> we didn't even do that. So, that was it. Just, At the time, it was enough. Yeah, I was happy. I mean, it went over and there was no knocking or banging. Yes. It just... Come on, get on! Ugh, all right. Jeez. Getting excited. Don't get excited. If I'm excited about this, imagine how excited I'm going to be when that 429 fires up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that 429 is going to be a monster. It is going to be a monster. So I hope you stick around for that video sort of series two. Once we start, uh, once you finish this bike, we'll be starting on the Mac one, and uh, that's going to be a beast. Ready? Turn the ignition on. I have to say, from this angle, with a tank like that, it looks more like a chopper bobber. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's not. It's, it's all just it. mess and stuff everywhere. Right, we have power, we have fuel, we have battery. You're witnessing the birth of a monster. Please ignore the rain. Drum roll, please. That float's dripping again. I have the ignition off. Just pressing the button. Okay, it's run out of electric pretty quick. Okay. Right. I'm not. I wasn't expecting too much, to be fair. Right. Do you want to turn the chokers off? Got one. Can you do? And open the time. They're closed. Yeah. No. Yeah. They've got one. Yeah. Oh. Some sparks. Oh, hang on. That might be in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes! 
sounds like it's missing. It does, not it? It's not actually that loud. It's not as loud as I thought it was. No. Just on these leaves. Oh, it smells good. Go again. We do have new spark plugs if necessary. Yeah, but they seem right. Silencer type muffler type thing is removed. Malcolm, start that engine. Try it.
<laughs> Take that. Oh with my god, my with, eyes. With or without. Oh. Uh, to be honest, with, with, <laughs> yeah. That's uh, loud. Why is it missing? Um, it could be because we haven't done up the carbs onto the engine. Right, okay. It's dragging the air in. Oh my god, my eyes are That's burning. probably why we have to run it on choke as well. My eyes, seriously, are burning. Have you ever been to Top Fuel Drangsters? Yeah, I have. <laughs> but not in an enclosed garage. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <coughs> oh, what a sound though, huh? Oh. How pleased are you that that is running? I actually prefer it with. Yeah. Simply because it's, it's too much. Without the battle, well, we'll to you, the state where you can't hear it out there. It might, yeah, and I don't mean. Yeah, you, you, you can't lose hear that noise. Uh, yeah, yeah, you lose the unique sound of that roar. Yeah, it's just too noisy. It's just too loud. Yeah. Oh, that's hot. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think that's um, too loud without? I mean, yeah. obviously, <laughs> probably can't tell. No, probably not. <laughs> it's you're probably not going to capture that on video. To be fair, it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> it's <coughs> to be honest with you, the sort of misfire is probably causing the vapours in the room. Right. So, yeah. But it is, it sounds lovely with it in. Yeah. Enough, it's enough. I'm going to go back in there. But it's running! Yeah. What a result! So, um, the misfire might be to do with the fact that, well, possibly two reasons. One, the carbs were not done up. So they were just yeah, loosely yeah. pushed on, so they could have been drawing air in. So Malcolm was just doing that up now. The other reason could be that the carbs will probably need setting up. Because obviously everything's been stripped down, it's got a different exhaust system on it. Um, so oh, without the baffles that it had before, so chances are it's going to need setting up properly. So we're going to tighten the carburetors up for one, see if it runs better. Um, if not, We'll do it again once the carbs have been set up properly. But there is a success story there. It sounds bloody awesome. It's it's hard to to tell you what it sounds like when the battle's out, but it's actually too loud to the state where you don't hear just how good this exhaust system sounds off this engine. So battles in, I think, is better. Yeah, I agree. What do you reckon? Also, don't forget, we are still using the old spark plugs. Yes, we are. And the old coils and the old leads. Yeah, there that are going to be new leads on there. We've got yeah. new spark plugs already. I mean, the, the plan for today was just to get it running, and it is running. We have done exactly what we set out to do today. Exactly. With the exception of doing wiring, because we just bought a new loom. I've got fizzy feelings going through me now. Will you please? I'm so excited. It's yeah. so much closer to being done now. Well, I'm going to go again with the carbs done up. OK, fire it up. I'll just put the ignition off. Okay. Stick wire in and fire it up. Yeah. Wow. So that's choke. Carbs chokes completely off for now. Just try it again. What we also discovered is that there's a little blow in one of the exhaust pipes. Uh, I yeah, think it's old. number two or number three. Yeah. Can't see which one, but um, that's going to be fixed anyway. But that's, that's, this is all fixable stuff, no problem. 
the main thing, which we set out to do today, was to get it running, or at least get it started. We wanted to hear that engine actually run. And it runs beautifully. And I know we've put a lot of work into it already, but for the most part, engines are fixable. It needs to be more smoother, but that will be done. We've got new spark plugs, new leads. We'll fix that exhaust. Yeah, we need to change um, the coils and leads, I think. There's a still a little bit of fuel coming out of one of the overflows, so maybe the float bowls are sticking there. Oh, yeah, I think the float pin is sticking a little barrel thing. But, um, but yeah, good. It's, uh, well, what else can I say? That brings us to a fantastic end to this video. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, next week we're going to be back on this because I just want to get it's it done now. too epic not to. It is. <laughs> um, we're going to be racing this to manage to make it you know, fixed uh, and then starting to strip the bike down again, ready to go and get this powder coated. Almost it's time. Almost start mounting these things okay. in various places. I mean, that thing obviously needs to be mounted. But it's not yeah. It needs many of them now. We'll touch it on this. It's sparks. Yes, it's sparks. Yeah. So it's meant to be grounded, I think. Or is it? I mean, it's not meant to be grounded. But it's getting close now. It is meant to be so grounded. please join us next time. Oh, I'm, I'm really excited. This is giving me all sorts of fizzy feelings inside. So until then, please ride and drive carefully. Oh, but have fun. <laughs> I missed my line. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>